Hey guys, Drifter here. Today we're going to be talking about Ascendant, which is an indie FPS game that is simultaneously in every genre at once and also its own unique cohesive thing. I got a chance to play early at a YouTuber capture event and wanted to share with you my mini review impressions and experiences from the couple of rounds that I got to play. The Ascendant beta has just dropped today, so if you want to check it out, it's linked down there below. And no, this is not a sponsored video. It's just the embargo for the gameplay ends at the same time as the beta. So if it's interesting, you can go check it out. I'll put the link down there in the description. And I'm going to tell you, this is a game that I have wildly mixed feelings about. There's some things about it I really like and some things that I absolutely hate with a passion. So when we get to the negative section, there's going to be some really salty negatives there. So the first thing you might have noticed about this game is it's one of many these days that has this sort of neo 80s retro wave aesthetic. A lot of the characters look like popular 80s stereotype. Most of the clothing you can unlock and hairstyles and stuff are all more or less in the neo retro wave aesthetic. And this is not to be confused with Concord, which actually has a very similar aesthetic to their game. Between the two, Ascendant is definitely the more retro and more colorful game. It embraces that sort of late 80s American gladiator uh, grid on everything punchiness uh, that we would associate with the stereotypical 80s. Gameplay wise, this game is simultaneously PvP, where you fight humans, PvE, where you fight monsters on the map, a battle royale on a giant map, a team deathmatch with limited lives, capturing and objectives like capture the flag, a looter shooter, an extraction based game, and it has vehicles going on. So there's a lot going on here. I'm gonna spend the first part of this video explaining Ascendant's core gameplay loop. So first things first, you and your squad will be dropped off at a random location around the map. And I mean around, I mean around the outskirts of the map. You do not get to choose where you drop, unlike a battle royale. And that place that you drop is your extraction point. You'll have to push into the map and capture a forward base, which is usually very easy to do. And you have objectives. In order to win, you need to capture power core. Power cores literally give you superpowers, like an ultimate ability in Overwatch, and you need to bring them back to your drop point and defend them and extract with them in order to win the game. Now, other teams have also been randomly dropped off around the map, much like a battle royale, and they're fighting over the exact same power cores that you are. Now, you do opt have the option to rush straight in and activate one of these cores and try to capture it. There's like a timer. There's a little bit of a King of the Hill type thing going on here where you have to defend your core and grab it and run away while other teams pile in on top. It actually reminds me a little bit of the cash out mode from finals or perhaps hard point from Call of Duty. But odds are, if you do that, you're going to be woefully underkitted. You're only going to have your base weapons, your base perks, your base armor, your base gear. It would be like walking into the final circle in Apex Legends with your starter gear and pistol. So most players are instead going to opt to pick up some degree of power, not power cores, but shields, armor, ammo, etc. all over the map and they're going to want to get some better weapons and uh, do some mini objectives. The most common miniature objective that you'll find is actually just killing the wildlife on the map. There's giant monsters that will set you on fire and kill you and they give birth to live babies that come out of the ground and attack you, knock you around the map. There are smaller monsters such as these seemingly harmless and adorable snails that are just designed for you to brutally crack open their shells and extract resources from. Man, I actually like I actually feel bad about killing the snails. It makes me feel sad. Whereas the rest of the enemies uh, present a reasonable challenge, especially in a map where a bunch of humans can come in and third party you and kind of ruin everything. My typical experience is the more difficult the enemy or the more red the enemy, the better loot that they drop. Now they drop uh, a currency that you can use to go to a store on the map and literally buy better loot at the store, buy better shields, buy better guns. This is where you would buy your custom weapons, somewhat analogous to a loadout in, in uh, Warzone. If you've played enough to have custom custom loadouts to buy, that is. Uh, you can also deposit your money into a bank in the shop so that your teammates can spend it, makes sharing with each other really easy. And one neat thing about the shop uh, compared to everything else is that when you die, you get to keep whatever you bought in the shop. You'll just respawn with it when you come back. The other stuff you find around the map, which is typically going to be the rarer and more powerful stuff, you're just kind of gone forever once you're dead. There are areas on the map that you can explore, futuristic apartment complexes and vehicles, which we'll talk about later. Uh, you can pay money to unlock doors like we're in COD Zombies and then go pay to refill your shields, pay to get your health back, pay to buy health packs, pay to do a number of things. There's also locations on the map such as this gigantic 
uh, airstrike array. If you capture, you can call in Call of Duty style kill streaks and airstrikes on the map to harass enemy players. But after you've done all of this, you've got your loot, you've done the P, uh, player versus enemy part of this game, and you're ready to go fight people, then what you're going to do is go try to find one of these power cores, which you will activate. There's a countdown timer you defend. Everybody knows that you're on the core. Everybody knows that you're defending it. So everybody and their grandmother is going to try to third party you and dogpile in and try to steal your core. So you have to kill them all, then take the core. Again, the core gives you superpowers. Run back to your base deposit the core in the base, and then there's an additional countdown timer before you fully sort of capture it and extract with it. And after you have extracted the power from the power core, I guess you're winning the game. Whoever extracts the most wins. And it operates in a little bit of a looter shooter type fashion in the amount of power you extract with is essentially your custom loot, gear, gun, leveling points that you would use in the post game to level up. So the more power you extract, the more uh, cool stuff you are able to unlock. As you can see, Ascendant is a game that has a lot of other games built into it. And its core gameplay loop is not my normal thing. It's something that kind of threw me for a loop when I was playing it. I don't normally do PVE games or these sort of hodgepodge looter shooters. I, I've come to understand that I'm more of a brain dead gamer. I like 6v6 COD, I like Overwatch, I like the finals, I like to jump and shoot and scoot. So micromanaging a lot of loot and inventory and econ and doing stuff like that didn't super appeal to me. But to give the developers credit, when you're doing all of that and building up and then people do come in to, feel your, to steal your stuff, there's sort of a, an enhanced pressure. The combat feels me more meaningful, more valuable because it's more rare, like in old PUBG. So it is truly its own very unique type of game. It may not be my type of game, but I've never really played anything quite like it. So this part of the video is where things are gonna start getting more negative. Uh, and that's where I'm gonna go over player movement, weapons, gunfights, thoughts, handling, graphics, optimization, stuff like that. And the general thing I want you to keep in mind as I list my unlimited amount of gripes here is that I think the developers decided to do too much. Their picture was too big, too wide, too crazy, and they didn't have enough time to polish some of the fundamentals of the game. So player movement is very standard sort of first person shooter. You can crawl up surfaces up to a certain height. You can mantle on them. You can slide, sprint, jump. It's all sort of very basic. And I got to admit a little bit on the slower side and it's a little bit on the less polished side. It doesn't feel as smooth as climbing and jumping in Apex and COD. And this again, this is an indie game, so I can't be too hard on them. It's not quite as smooth as the finals. It feels a little janky, a little stutter steppy, and especially the slides feel kind of slow to me, kind of weird. Uh, but I did play with some experienced players and just sort of following them and their paths. The map is definitely built for the movement. There are ways to navigate the map in interesting ways, and maybe it's just something that I'm not used to. It almost feels a little bit more like Mirror's Edge, like a slow parkour. The weapons in the game are honestly very well designed. They're all very interesting, very unique. You've got your uh, sniper rifles, which you might have already seen gameplay of. You've got giant rocket and grenade launchers, burst weapons, energy weapons. You've got chain gun type weapons that round up and wind up and shoot faster as they go. You have your pistol, which has unlimited ammo, uh, kind of anything and everything in between. You can level them up, put attachments and different stuff on them, and the higher rarity ones do deal more damage. In general, the weapons are quite well designed, in my opinion. I have no gripes or complaints about them. Oh, and I almost forgot, almost every single thing in the game is a projectile. This is all projectile-based uh, gunfight, and you're going to see me missing horrifically because somebody told me in the pregame lobby that these were hit scans. So I was playing as if I were playing hit scans when they were all actually projectiles. So that probably didn't go very well. Gunfights feel a little bit like a slower Apex Legends, to be honest. You have a very similar shield structure. You have damage numbers. Uh, you like to push and flank. You snipe. You move in. You kill them. That people can heal. They get their shields up. There's healing guns. Uh, I would say if you imagine a more casual Apex Legends would be the best analogy I could give for these gunfights. It especially uh, applies for the futuristic spacey kind of weapons. I do feel that the hit detection is a little weird. Again, that might be because I thought I was playing hit scan and it was projectile. And one thing I don't like is I can't really see the enemies very well. So the entire map is bright, colorful, punchy, alien. And then all of the characters are like 80 stereotypes. You got Vasquez, you got Macho Man, Randy Savage, and Hulk Hogan, and all these people going around. 
and there's just this insane cacophony of colors, which I usually like, but with all the character customization, it ends up feeling a little bit unplanned, and enemies don't stand out as much as they should. I feel like they blend in with the mess of colors in the environment when they're shooting and making noise. They don't really show up on the radar COD style or anything like that, and it's very easy to just be walking around and just instantly die like you're playing Tarkov because somebody can just see you and they just headshot you and you're just completely toast with a sniper rifle. I had that happen quite a lot, not very fun. Um, gunfights don't, in my opinion, they feel like I need to take a position and hold it defensively. They end up coming down like, imagine if Apex didn't have his advanced movement because I can't, in, at least at my skill level in this game, I couldn't rush in and slide and like, you know, slice the pie around a corner because the slide was a little weird. I couldn't climb fast enough. I couldn't jump fast enough. I felt a little bit bogged down and wanting more out of the gunfights. And uh, as you see, the better ones that I have footage of were all just very conservative. Thoughts on the map. Uh, the map design, actually quite good. The map fits the movement really well. The map uh, is beautiful, no doubt. I do like the colors, minus the fact that I can't see the enemies. It's interesting, it's well designed. I don't think that the elements on the HUD, like if you hit the M key to go check out the map, make it as distinct because there's an outer ring and then a middle ring and then an inner ring and they're all sort of have different functions in that gameplay loop, I said, because you've got your extraction points, your core points, your shops and stuff like that. And they all exist in different places, but it doesn't uh, read quite like that. Not on the mini map and a little bit in game. Again, I'm a new player. I just felt overwhelmed and there was just spacey sort of future buildings everywhere. Uh, the map is very much so built for the movement and the type of game that we're playing. We even have like certain areas just for monster encounters. So I'm going to say the map is good for what they're trying to accomplish. The vehicles in the game are pretty simple, straightforward. They're primarily for moving you from one location to another quickly. They're not really combat vehicles. You'll just get blown up really quickly. Uh, graphics are pretty good, honestly. Pretty polished, pretty smooth, pretty sane. Uh, the gameplay you're seeing is choppy. It's actually not choppy due to a performance issue on my end. It's choppy because I was playing in a community server with people from all over the world. So we had like one server in New York and people connecting from UK and I don't know, New Zealand or something, and then America, and then some guy in South America. And when you put all that together, it kind of gets a little choppy. But graphics look good seemed well optimized to me. I had no issues running through it on the tutorial and the offline modes, it ran very smooth. When we got online, it chopped because of that. So I don't have any gripes about the graphics, graphical options, very simple, very straightforward. I was able to easily put it in windowed mode, which is nice. And now we're coming down to the final thoughts and impressions. And I think I could sum up almost this entire thing in maybe like one sentence, which is, or a couple. I'm, I'm struggling. You can tell I had a kind of a rough time with this game, okay guys? I think the developers had a Fable type problem. If you might remember the original Fable I think was being developed by Peter Molyneux and they had this kind of core game that was really good and then he's like we gotta add a carrot farming simulator. Okay, let's do that. Now, add a good evil system. Okay, let's just tack that on. And then it was, okay, well, well now we need a character creation. Th okay, let's put that on. And Peter Molyneux kept adding more and more and more to Fable, and it's a classic now. But at launch, it was heavily criticized because while it had so much stuff going on and so many options and so many different things to do, not many of them were very well polished. And that's kind of exactly what I got from this game. I can play this game PvE like it's Monster Hunter. I can play this game like it's a Battle Royale. I can play this game like it's a hero shooter. I can play this game like it's Apex Legends. I can play this game like it's Tarkov and just try to extract all the time. And the base idea of the gameplay and combat flow when they put all that together actually worked quite well. In my second game, I was playing with more experienced players and I could kind of see how that was supposed to work. But I think the basics of like sort of the way your character moves and handles and slides and climbs on the map, the way uh, the HUD works, the way that uh, the damage numbers pop up on the enemies and the shield system and the way you healed and operate armor, the general like feel of the guns and how they, uh, well, they don't feel bad, but it just feels a little clunky. It feels like somebody built this game to have a sort of very rudimentary functional shooter aspect to it and said, okay, we've got what is technically a shooter that is a very generic sort of shooter. Now let's tack five different mini games on top of it and they kind of go in everywhere. I try not to be hateful, especially for an independent game. I support independent art here on the channel as much as I can, uh, but I feel like the focus is in the wrong place. I, the beta's out, you can go play it and tell me if I'm wrong. 
but I think what the developers need to do is focus on their fundamentals. They need to polish the very short, you know, like less than three second version of the combat loop, how a slide works, how a jump works, how a wall jump works, how a climb works, how a, you know, you mantle and handle weapons and how hip firing and how a lot of these things work because those very sort of fundamentals in a game aren't quite right. Now I'm a picky guy on fundamentals. When it comes to shooters, I only play like the true polished cream of the crop. I haven't actually experienced the wide breadth of shooters out there. So I might just be being picky. I might just be a Karen. I might just be, you know, unfair to this independent game that doesn't have the resources of Treyarch to spend a billion dollars on Black Ops 6 or something like that. But I think that their focus is screwed up. I, I think that they need to focus much more on just how the game runs and shoots and feels and way less on this insanely complex and unique combat loop. Even in talking to people in the community, there was a tremendous amount of focus on this unique combat loop, which the game has, but I didn't feel that the base gameplay was good enough to justify that. So that would be my advice for the game. But again, the beta's out. You're all actually welcome to download it and play it. You can check it out. I think, again, I should be linking it down there in the description where you'll find all my juicy sponsor stuff too. Well, not sponsor for this, just, you know, headsets and stuff, so. Uh, that's kind of my experience with Ascendant. And at the end of the day, I don't think that this is a game for me. I'm probably not going to play anymore. Sorry. All right, guys, that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. Whew, getting a little sweaty up here. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.